Hello, if you're looking to get extra Wi-Fi FPV range out of your Phantom 2 Vision or Phantom 2 Vision Plus, uh, this website, fpvlr.com, <clears throat> sells some really nice antennas that are matched to the, tile, the style of antenna that's on your Phantom 2 Vision already. Your Vision comes with LHCP antennas, which is left-hand circular polarized, and uh, very few places make their style of antenna and uh, FPVLR sells some really nice circular polarized um, helicals, half domes, and uh, pinwheel antennas. This is an example of a half dome antenna from FPVLR. This one is left hand circular polarized which will work perfectly with the stock antennas on your Phantom 2 Vision or Vision Plus. <clears throat> People that are moving from the antennas that I originally started off flying with, which are the 5 dBi and 8 dBi TP-Link dipole antennas, um, have all improved much uh, better range than either of these when they moved down to this antenna, as well as much improved uh, stability. Um, I mean, I was getting decent range from these. And, um, but it certainly wouldn't be reliable. It would still be prone to cutting out throughout its range. Uh, the circular antenna will provide a much more stable Wi-Fi signal than uh, linear. <clears throat> because uh, you are in an aircraft which moves around and a circular polarized transmission which is what's in your actual stock trans transmitter Wi-Fi range extender gives you a more reliable result. Uh, and let me show you how compact this particular antenna is mounted on top of the uh, repeater. It adds virtually no weight to the controller. <clears throat> and you should expect to double or more than double the range. Um, your results will vary depending on where you fly and how much Wi-Fi interference is. Um, like if you fly in the middle of nowhere, people that fly in really desolate areas, I've seen ranges from this of over 4,000, four to 5,000 feet from this. If you add an amplifier, you're going to get much better range on top of that. Um, the least that people have gotten out of this from some reports I've heard are around maybe 1900 feet, 1900, 2000 feet. On average people are getting over 2000, between two to 3000 foot range with this versus the stock which is going to give you at most 1300 foot range if you're running on the lowest Wi-Fi preview quality settings. So <clears throat> it is very nice and um, if you want to get a little bit more range and don't mind sacrificing some of the portability of this antenna, you could go for one of FPVLR's uh, larger antennas like their parasitic helix or their 6.5 turn. Um, I have a 6.5 turn from another company. It's also a little bit more pricey. But this is an example also of an RHCP antenna. Um, FEVLR has their own version. It looks very similar to this one. But um, let me just show you the difference between RHCP and LHCP. <clears throat> RHCP, you see the spiral goes in this direction. From top down this way. And uh, the LHCP, its rotation is in this direction, left. The RHCP is to the right. <clears throat> and when flying, you want to have both sides matched. You want to do RHCP to RHCP, LHCP to LHCP uh, for the best possible results in signal. And let me give you an example as to why you want to match the two. <clears throat> so let's say this is a... Uh,
So this, let's say this is your LHCP wavelength, which if you're looking at from this perspective, is traveling like that, versus a linear patch, which is kind of this direction. Now, now let's say you flew with, you had an RHCP antenna. It's going to be the opposite. Oops. So, <clears throat> what's going to happen is that you're going to have a lot of loss of signal because both of the wave patterns don't line up. So um, while you well, I mean this is assuming like a perfect world with two exactly identical antennas flying through space in a vacuum, um, you're going to have a significant amount of loss of signal because the wavelengths won't be intersecting. They're going to be missing each other for a large portion of it. Although in the real world, of course, you're going to have something called signal reflection. So some of the signal will bounce off of surfaces and it can turn an LHCP signal into an RHCP signal and vice versa. So they can work together, but they won't work together optimally. You won't be getting an ideal signal. And <clears throat> over here, with the dipole antenna, you see it's more wavelength straight up and down. And if this would be a vertically polarized and of course if you tilt your dipole antenna sideways now it suddenly becomes horizontally polarized but this is why with a linear antenna like a dipole if one antenna is pointing up one side you want to have both sides pointing up in the same direction although with an aircraft the aircraft is going to be dipping around, going this way, that way, so it alters the polarization, which is going to give you very inconsistent results in terms of how clean a transmission you get. If you have a diversity setup, or if you modified both ports in your Wi-Fi extender, if you are using two, you want to have them pointing in two different directions, one straight up, one sideways, or slightly off, so that way they have the best, best chance of getting a signal. <clears throat> With a circular polarized antenna, you're not nearly susceptible to the turning around and pivoting due to the circular nature of the signal. You're going to get signal in many more different directions, so it will give you a far more reliable connection, and of course matching the direction of the circular pattern that you're transmitting in will give you that much better reliability. So uh, again, if you're using an unmodified Phantom 2 Vision or Vision Plus, you'll want to go with an LHCP design um, such as this one uh, for your Wi-Fi repeater to get the most reliable signal that you can. If you are modifying both sides of your vision at the same time, then it doesn't really matter. You could go with LHCP on both sides or RHCP on both sides since you're able to change both sides. But if you're not changing the camera side again, you want to stick with LHCP for the best possible results. Um, <clears throat> so just for the fun of it, I'm going to test this LHCP one with my RHCP antennas that I have already, just to see how it works. But the real test will be when I get my um, the RHCP version of this antenna so I can uh, do some good range test. Uh, with my Phantom. Oh, also, if you were modifying both sides, your Phantom and the controller, um, probably for the best of both worlds, you could get an LHCP and an RHCP antenna and combine the two. So an LHCP, like both an LHCP and an RHCP version of this, or combine, or like something like that, and um, an LHCP pinwheel and an RHCP pinwheel on the Phantom. <clears throat> so that way, regardless of which way the uh, signals are reflecting as they trans 
mid through the uh, air and the ground, um, you're always going to be between the two antennas. You're always going to be getting a signal that matches one of them. So uh, anyway, hope this uh, video has been helpful. And uh, <clears throat> if you buy from uh, FPVLR, mention my web my YouTube channel that I sent you. And uh, that's about it. Happy flying. I will have a follow-up video showing some uh, range results using this antenna with and without amplification. And please like and subscribe.